Hello and welcome to my channel Becoming Bev. In today's video we're going to talk about the mistakes that I made or the regrets that I have in my build, the things that I would have done differently. And some of this stuff I've done two or three times. So the first thing I would have done differently is my flooring. In fact, I'm getting my flooring redone today. The first flooring that I had was just a piece of linoleum on the floor. And that was pretty good, except it ended up getting a couple of tears in it. I replaced that and I thought, I'll go with light colored flooring to match the decor in the van. I hate this light colored flooring. Literally every time I step foot in or out of the van, the floor looks dirty. I bought new flooring and today Jeremy from the campground is going to put the new flooring in. So I'm pretty excited about that. So first to regret, no light colored flooring. So another thing I haven't quite got right yet is my gray water tank. The first gray water tank that I had was a five gallon tank. I didn't empty it often enough. I didn't really understand what was going on yet. And that one ended up being a science project. So I got rid of that five gallon tank and I got a one gallon tank, but that one's not quite big enough. Like even if I need to wash my hair in the sink, I always find that I'm worried about that one gallon filling up or overflowing. So I need to replace that. I bought a two gallon tank and I'm hoping that that's my happy medium. Five gallon was too big, one gallon was too small, but I think the two gallon will be just right. <laughs> now the next thing that I wouldn't have done to the van is I wouldn't have had this awning put on. I've really only used it a couple of times and it's kind of a hassle and flimsy. I don't really ever use it and I don't think I need it. Now I have mixed feelings about my air conditioner. It keeps the van plenty cool, in fact too cool sometimes. I have to open this little hatch back here to divert the air from blowing straight on me. But it's a pretty big unit, it's pretty tall and I'm wondering if I shouldn't have researched it a bit more and just seeing if I could find a lower profile unit. Like right now the van is about nine foot six inches tall so I feel like I need a 10 foot clearance. So that really eliminates things like going through drive throughs and using parking garages. So I wish that I had a lower profile air conditioner on the roof of this van. If you guys know of anything that would work better that would be a smaller unit for the van that wouldn't stick out so far on top please leave me a comment. Now, one of the mistakes that I made in regards to the air conditioning unit too is I had that giant generator on the back of the van. I had a cargo rack back there and then I had it custom cut, like custom built to be smaller so it wouldn't stick out so far. And finally, I just got rid of it. I had a soft start put on the air conditioning unit and now I can run it with a 2000 watt generator that just sits in the back in the garage area of the van. So I'm happier with that part. Now the next thing I still haven't got quite right in the van is the heating situation. I'm totally good when I'm plugged in, but when I'm off grid, my battery bank doesn't last as long as I need it to to run a heater. So I need a better heating solution for when I'm off grid. And then sometimes it's just little things like you live and you learn. <laughs> Like I used to keep throw rugs in the van and they were always filthy. So I got rid of all the rugs and I got this little bamboo shower mat. I love the bamboo mat. I use it outside the front door as a doormat and then I use it whenever I'm using the outdoor shower for the van. 
Now, one of the items in the van that I'm kind of on the fence about is my Epicool refrigerator. I like the refrigerator. I feel like it does a good job, but I feel like the plug on the front could have been manufactured to be a bit sturdier. It's given me problems a couple of times, like when I used to have to switch the plug, like to plug it in to the DC outlet when I was driving and then plug it into the normal outlet when I was stopped. I don't have to do that anymore, so it's not as much of a problem, but that little, um, connector on the refrigerator has come loose a couple of times and given me some problems. So I just feel like they should build that a little sturdier for unplugging and plugging those cords in that refrigerator. And sometimes it's just an experiment. Like when I first got the van, it had a little kitchen sink set up. It was kind of janky. <laughs> And then I had the second sink put in, but the cabinets were terrible. Like it was a ton of wasted space for storage. And then Larry finally built me these beautiful cabinets that I feel like are perfect for the van, really optimizing the storage. Sometimes I think I just get a little ahead of myself. I get in a hurry to get something done and I just run full speed ahead instead of taking the time to really um, think about it and research it. So sometimes I end up doing things a couple of times before I get it right. This is the second build on the bed platform. And I don't really have a regret about that because I feel like the first one was an inexpensive build, just a couple of hundred bucks and a trip to Home Depot. And it worked just fine. Like it got me in the van, it got me some experience to see what I really wanted and what I really needed. And again, Larry from Ramblin' Man Conversions built me a beautiful bed platform with a garage area and plenty of storage and really optimized that storage under the bed. And then another mistake that I feel like I made early on was overpacking in the van, like bringing a lot of stuff that I really didn't need. So I've taken probably two bins of stuff out of the van. You know, I took out, um, like a little folding camping table that took up quite a bit of space that I really never used. I had placemats in the van at one time. I thought that was important. <laughs> I don't think that's so important anymore. Yeah, so just really getting out there and using the van and seeing what I really need and what I really don't need, getting in touch with the things that I need inside the van to access daily and things I can put in that drawer in the garage or the compartment in the back of the van that I need to have with me, but I don't need access to them on a daily basis. So that said, there are a few things that I did get right the first time. I love the swivel seat. That was done right the first time. It really opens up the van and makes me feel like I have a living room area. I love my big bed in the van. I feel like I got that right. I love the decor in the van. I'm really happy with that. I won't be changing that up. I feel like I did good with the Max Air fan. That's been a huge game changer and also the little Opolar rotating fan. I got those right the first time. And then I love having my backup systems. I think that was smart. I love my Ocmo battery for a backup system. I love having just like an extra gallon of water just in case something happens, my pump's not working, I still have access to water. And then I also love my little Gas One Butane stove. I like having that for a backup. I like using that one when I'm off grid and then using my induction cooktop whenever I'm plugged in. And then I put a backup camera on the back of the van. I feel like that was a smart move. That comes in handy on a regular basis. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with my van set up. So I wanna show you guys something that I made for the van this week. Now you can see back here in the back of the van, I have this little almost like a headboard set up here. So let me show you what I've got tucked in back here. I found this Reflectix from US Energy Products and it's just a three millimeter insulation and you can see it's really thin right here and you can cut it pretty easily with just a pair of scissors. I cut some window coverings for the van and my intention is just to have a, an extra little layer of insulation when it's really, really cold out or when it's really hot outside. I cut these a little bit oversized and then just took the scissors and trimmed them up with the intention that they fit perfectly over these windows. These just slide right up here into the window. 
and I cut them just to size so they kind of tuck in right here on the edge of the window and then I cut just a little nook for that window handle. So they just kind of fit in just like that. They're pretty easy, they're pretty flexible, they're pretty thin. I'm really happy with um, how they turned out and they're fairly easy to get in and out of the window. I just kind of pinch them and pull out like that. And you can tell a huge difference between the coldness there and the coldness when this reflectix is up in the window. I'll put a link to this in the video description. There are two different size rolls you can get. You can get one that's 24 inches by 10 feet long, or you can get one that's 48 inches by 25 feet long. And for the van, I would recommend the bigger size roll. The 24 inches was too short to do the two back side windows and to do the windshield. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for watching. I hope this information was helpful. If you have any tips for me, please leave them in the comments. I appreciate y'all and you keep watching and I'll keep posting content. <laughs>